Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to revisit something that I posted about probably six months or probably even longer ago and this is about a GPS tracker solution that I was working on under Node-RED and I wanted to do something where I'm not relying on any third-party services or third-party servers so I wanted my phone to report my location directly to Node-RED and I have the mapping and all the logging functionality done in uh, Node-RED as well. And that's uh, what pretty much I managed to uh, get completed to some extent. And I have to say a big thanks to Sarik who actually came and helped me with the app side as well because you know in the previous video I mentioned about how I was not able to get the phone to reliably send uh, location updates and some of you recommended uh, various apps that were supposed to do that and I've tried many of these apps but actually none of them working and then probably a couple of uh, weeks or maybe about a month ago uh, Sari came about saying that uh, he can help me to develop an Android application because he was working on something similar so this Android app started to work and that's the one that I'm using in the new solution now so as you can see I can get the tracks and I actually done a few things so for example I can map my you know the tracks on the on the map and I can you know map various tracks as you can see here I have you know track one and the track two I'm just going to talk about how those are differentiated and I can see all the data everything is stored in a database I also map it on a chart so you can see you know elevation speed and GPS accuracy and I was doing a walk in the weekend so obviously the speed and everything is really really low and uh, and then well that's the altitude profile and finally I also have some tracks so I was able to distinguish between so that was like two walks that I've done from my house and and back and I can see when it started and and you know how long it was and what was the estimated distance and if I go a little bit further back in time this was something when I was uh, driving out and back so we can see you know various tracks and you know things where I stopped along the way and I continued and here we can see that uh, the you know the system has identified three different tracks so again I was going from my home to my holiday home to talk to some builders and on the way I stopped for a coffee and then I drove all the way back home and the solution is able to support multiple users so I have just a test user you can pick a day and you can also decide if you want to leave markers so obviously it's going to plot the track and then it can also leave markers so for example I set it to every five minutes so you can see like you know these five minute marks and originally I thought I'm going to use this to have my own tracker solution let's say if my kids will have uh, phones and uh, if I would let them to go to school so at least I can just you know know where they are I know when they are leaving schools and if they are coming home or whether, whether they are doing, going somewhere else but I think this could be also useful if somebody has like um, uh, or at least in Hungary if you have a company car you have to keep a log of where you've been and like you know what was personal and what was for business so that would be quite easy to do with an application like this which you know basically just logs your move it stores in a database and then you can just review where you have been if you are doing it retrospectively and you can't remember what you have done uh, during the earlier days of the week and just to show you the Android app as well so it's called the GPS tracker and it is not available in the Play Store so if you want to play with it then you find the APK file in the release folder and you just have to install it on your phone you have to turn off the security settings that would allow you to install applications from other sources as well but it's a really simple application you have a start and a stop button here on the main screen and you can also go into the settings in your settings we have a couple of things that you can set so there is a minimum time and the minimum distance which uh, sets up the logging so it will be either every five seconds or if you have moved for more than five meters we originally planned to use telegram uh, to send messages so um, my idea was that we will try to set up some sort of communication between the uh, the Android app and the Node-RED instance so I don't have to open up the Node-RED to the open internet so I didn't want to have a direct communication from the Node-RED so from the phone to Node-RED 
so we thought that maybe we can use this telegram and we can just uh, you know send the location update to a telegram bot but for some reason it's not working so i'm, I'm not getting the messages through uh, or at least node is not able to download those messages i it maybe has to do something the way we are sending the messages but that's something that uh, you know it's it's something for the future so at the moment the email option is working and here you can just set up your email account i use gmail and because i have two-factor authentication set up for gmail i have to create a app password uh, otherwise it's not going to work so you set up the usual SMTP username and the password, your email address. And you can also specify what will be the subject of the email and then, you know, some sending intervals. And you also have the option whether you want to send data on mobile network or not. And the last option is something that I worked on even in the previous solution is that I wanted to disable tracking when it is connected to the Wi-Fi. Because my idea was that, you know, if you are connected to the Wi-Fi, you, uh, you are at a specific place where you know. And there is no point, you know, logging because especially if you are in the house, those logs are going to be just all over the place. So there will be just a lot of sort of like a random noisy points. And actually, I'm also using this Wi-Fi functionality so the Node-RED can tell the tracks from each other. So let's say, so the assumption is that where you go to well-known places, you most probably have their Wi-Fi configured in your phone. So as soon as the your phone connects to your Wi-Fi, you probably have reached a point that you know about. So then it stops logging and then the updates that are sent by the mobile app also contains the the Wi-Fi's that you are getting either logged on or the Wi-Fi networks that you are leaving. So when it leaves a Wi-Fi network, that's when one of the track starts and it continues all the way you are connected to another Wi-Fi again. So if I go back to my previous example, you know, track one, uh, there is a start Wi-Fi and there is an end Wi-Fi. So this is where I left home and I reached my holiday home, which also has a Wi-Fi and a 3G stick. And then I left my holiday home and I stopped for a coffee on the way back. And uh, I happened to there been before, so I remember what the Wi-Fi or my phone remember what the Wi-Fi for that cafe was. And then finally I left the cafe and I reached home. So these are the three tracks that the system was able to distinguish from each other. And as you can see on the map, these tracks are actually labeled with different colors. So this is when I was driving down and then I was driving back on a different road all the way and stopped at a cafe and then the blue one when I, when I was driving back and, and the two tracks on the highway pretty much. Well, now I can even, you know, see the, the you know, the various, uh, what is it, the lanes on the highway. So I think it really works and it shows that, you know, it has a good enough precision so you can tell where you have been and I was using the settings that you have seen on the screenshot so it is able to give me a fairly you know detailed path of you know what I've taken it gets only a little bit jerky on the on ramp so these are probably the you know the five seconds or the five meter intervals but you know it's good enough for logging I think and of course because the updates are coming via email it's not really online so I haven't even thought about doing all those features that uh, like a kids tracker would have where you can set up uh, you know areas and then when the phone leaves that area then it gives you an immediate notification because well it just you know the update are just not immediate so i'm going to share the flow that i have at the moment which is this one it has been modified from the previous flow and it's basically two main parts you have the update part here in the top and you also have the the email processing here in the button. Let me start with the email processing because actually that's uh, you know fairly easy as well. So you have the email node where you can set up again your let's say a Gmail account or whatever account that you use, and you also have an inject node. And in that inject node, I've specified a filter criteria. So what I'm feeding into the email node that I'm only interested in emails where the subject contains the GPS tracker four five six. And that's the, you know, the subject information that I've entered in the app as well. Uh, again, the reason I felt this is important because I, well, I didn't want to create a separate uh, account just for this one. And you can install this application on multiple phones. And if you just, uh, you know, separate out the subjects, you can use the same solution to track multiple users or, you know, multiple phones. 
So that's going to filter the email messages out, then it goes to the email box and then it gets all the emails and this, uh, uh, and this flow just extracts the various uh, attachments. So all these emails will come with an attachment which is called the data.json. That's con going to contain all the uh, GPS logs and also the logs about uh, connecting and disconnecting for, from Wi-Fi networks. So this is just checks that you know you have one attachment and the attachment is called data.json. So it happens to pick up any other emails, it would just uh, those would just get ignored. And then finally we have another one which is going to extract all the information from the files and then just save it into the database. And I've created a separate tracker database which has two tables. It has a GPS table. So it shows you all the information that is come from the app. So latitude, longitude, there is an accuracy, altitude, speed, and the actual time when that measurement was taken. And I've also used the device ID. And this is just some basically random ID that identifies your phone. And that's again how you can distinguish multiple users or the data from multiple users. And then if you go back, there is another table which is called the Wi-Fi. And that shows you pretty much the you know, similar information, what user, whether it was a connection to the Wi-Fi network or a disconnection from, or being disconnected from a Wi-Fi network, what was the SSID and again, the time. So these are the two information which gets uh, uh, merged together to form the tracks and basically the reporting that you have seen on the uh, dashboard. And here in the flow, I left a comment node which contains the a table creation sequels uh, for the two tables so you can just easily recreate them so going back to the extract so that's where the device id gets identified again you can just specify whatever device id that you need and then it's going to you know create all the uh, sql statements to create the database entries and i'm not sure if it's absolutely necessary but i've also added this limit here because um, let's say you have a longer track, you, you, if you are only running this update, let's say once a day, it, it can pick up you know, thousands of different uh, GPS records. And I thought if you are trying to put it all in the database at once, then it's just going to be uh, really intensive for the Raspberry Pi. So I did this limit where it will only create you know, 50 records per second. So even if you have a longer track, it would complete, let's say, in a half a minute. So it's not really a huge limitation. And I just wanted to make sure that it's not going to hang up the whole Pi or you know, whatever system you're using because of the too many updates. And at the moment, I'm just running it manually, but you can configure this inject node to run, I don't know, every second hour or at the end of the day, you know, whatever frequency that you want. And that's it. So that creates the data from the emails. And then the rest of the flow, it generates the UI. So it generates the word map. Oh, and by the way, you have to use the word map. So this is the node red country web word map component. So that displays the map. And um, so here is the various filters where you can set the user, the, um, you know, the markers and the date. And this function node is going to generate the select statements from the two tables. And then it creates the a selection for the database points and it would generate the map. Well, actually, this is what I was using, that it generates a map using a single track. So it was the, you know, the first solution uh, that was before I started implementing the whole, you know, the track solution. And uh, this generates the data. Uh, which is, you know, this big list. You probably can leave that if you don't need that information. This is the one which generates the chart. So that's going to plot all the coordinates into the chart. And, and finally, also this track is going to be stored in the flow variables. If I refresh, you can see, oh, it takes a little bit of time because probably it has a lot of data in it. So that's the actual GPS track with all the points. So 2,500 at the moment. And then in the second step, which is, pre, which is basically this one, it generates all the tracks. So it stores the GPS points and then it runs the selection on the, on the Wi-Fi table. And then it merges the, the track information with the Wi-Fi information. So it just basically puts the, the Wi-Fi data in between the tracks based on the time. And then finally it does the root analytics, 
which is you know trying to determine what uh, when was the start of the track so it's basically just looking for events when you got connected to a wi-fi network sorry they got disconnected from a wi-fi network so that's the start of the track and then it's going to you know consider all the logs between that event and the next wi-fi connection as one track so it calculates the distance and the time and you know when the whole thing started and ended so it does all this calculation here and of course it loops through between you know another disconnect and another wi-fi connect it starts separating it out into separate tracks so you can see that was one track so you can see when was started start start date you know the start ssid the various counts and in between we can see all the different gps points as well so all the information is here and then finally this final function node is going to generate the map update based on this data so it's going to separate them out into various layers and also give them different you know track names and colors and you know just plot them on the screen and also add these markers if there are markers set in the configuration and that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, so I'm not really using it for the original purpose that I had, this you know kid tracking example. And to be honest, my kids don't have phones anyway, so it's a little bit too early for that. And this mobile app probably doesn't have all the features that you would expect, but all the code is here. So if you know how to do Android development, then just, you know, uh, the whole solution and the source code is here so you can add your functions that you think are necessary and you can and also you can already use the the flow that i've provided and you know it does the basic analytics and it works and um, maybe it needs an export functionality but you know pretty much the basic information that you want is already on this UI screen. So this is what I wanted to share with you. All the resources related to this project are going to be in the video description, but I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.